Previously on Quest for Wonder... To the Science Museum! I reckon your wonder might have got sucked into the recording equipment and is now desperate to escape. That's it then. If your wonder is used to first-class trips into space, that's exactly where it'll be. Come on! I don't think that's how it works. Are you sure your wonder hasn't gone into space? Maybe just to look for the messages we've been sending up there. Maybe it'll see them and then know you're looking for it. I have told you that's not how it works. Firstly, how would my wonder breathe in space? Yeah, I suppose she might explode. That wouldn't happen. Oh, oh, oh right, because because she's in a, in, a, in a space suit, I say, yeah, yeah. No, you don't explode in space. The pressure in the vacuum of space is so low that the boiling point of your liquids is reduced, so, you, so, so your blood would boil, and your skin might scratch a bit, twice its normal size, something like that. Oh, right, OK then. So, uh, so, so that's, that's OK then, isn't it? So, so uh, you know, well, hang on. What if your wonder is not, you know, like an Earth-based, carbon-based life form that breathes oxygen? You know, because it does have quite a unique look about it, doesn't it? You know what? For once, you're right. Yes. Uh... To the telescope! What is this? That's the Naismith telescope. The telescope James Naismith used to co-write the moon considered as a planet, a world and a satellite, all the way back in 1885. And he made plaster reliefs of what he saw, one of the great early studies of our moon. What? Hang on. So, so the same James Naismith who made a great big steam hammer. Wait, wait, wait. You actually know something. You actually know about Naismith's hammer. Well, I was trying to eat some walnuts and I got my hand stuck. You know it's meant for driving piles into the ground, right? I, mean, well, I, I know a little bit more about that now, yes. Enough walnut talk. Let's get back to thinking about the moon. <sighs> you see, listening to you say that is as if your wonder is almost back again. So, what can you see? It's... What can you see? What can you see? Tell me, what can you see? It's... What? Uh, what? What can you see? It's, it's, it's the Science Museum ceiling. Oh. Oh, I'll tell you what. Do you think they'd mind if we made a hole in the ceiling so we can see a bit further? Not after last time. Oh, yeah. All the neutrinos escaped, didn't they? Neutrinos don't escape. Oh, well, look, well, the director was very cross about something. <laughs> Neutrinos gone! Was probably something he said. I'm beginning to think that maybe my wonder has gone to the moon. Tell you what, can we just go and check on my walnuts? Well, I'd rather go to the moon. Well, it's always the moon with you, isn't it? It's always about you, you, you and the moon. Right, well, if we go and see a great big hammer, that's what we can do. Eat some walnuts and then go to the moon. So, hammer, walnut, moon. I bet that's what Neil Armstrong did. Why would he have done that? He loved walnuts. Always getting in trouble, cracking them in space and bits of shell going in Buzz's space paste. And where did you get that from? Well, it was from one of my more informative dreams when I had some of your white Stilton. Very authentic. Oh.